Thank you for tuning in to another episode of In Range. This is another episode about the Desert Tech MDR. However, this one is 556. Um, we've gone through and put in the conversion kit for this because to be very honest with you, I find this rifle far more compelling in 556 than I do in 308. In 308, it has a lot more significant recoil impulse. It tends to bottom out and the amount of force required to use this ejection system with 308 makes the gun very jumpy. It tends to bounce and makes it hard to use. In 556, however, this gun's far more pleasant. If you have not watched our first match with this gun in 5 with Ian and I, I would urge you to do so because we have some conclusions about using this in 556 versus 308. But one of the things that was left lacking in that video for me is what is the optimal MDR 556 config? What can we do with this rifle besides just overall length that may make it a more compelling argument? Because as you know, if you're a longtime in range viewer, I tend to have um, consternation about bullpup designs and architecture in general. They leave things on the table ergonomically and sacrifice them for the purposes of overall length. And for me as a person that's a competitive shooter, even necessarily a tactical shooter going through classes and training, getting in and out of cars, yeah, there's a slight advantage there, but the reality is it's not as big of an advantage as I generally think a lot of people think it is, and therefore the overall length sacrificing some ergonomic elements always seems like a questionable give and take to me. Well, the MDR in 5.56 has been very reliable, and so I was thinking, what can we do to take advantage of this overall length and make this the optimal platform that it can be for what it has been designed to do? One of the things the MDR has been, all, or all bullpups have, is it tends to be biased to weight heavy in the rear. That does make it easier to handle one-handed, but it does make the Desert Tech is particularly biased to the rear, and it makes it really balance funny in that without any sort of extra weight in the front, the gun balances literally like this. And that tends to induce more of the snappiness of the recoil when firing it. And that's an important thing when doing shot to shot recovery. If you miss, you want to fire a secondary shot. In 5.56, it's less impactful. In 308, it's quite significant. However, it's still there in 5.56 as well. And I would argue what you want is a balance point to be pretty much in the middle of the gun. Because then you have the pivot point being where you're holding it. And therefore, this snappiness is gone. You don't want a lot of extra weight in the front because then you've got a forward heavy gun. And you don't want a lot of extra weight in the rear because then you've got a rear heavy gun. You kind of want it in the middle, at least that's my opinion. And the Desert Tech tends to be weighted to the rear. Additionally, bipod was an issue because you want to be able to rest this gun on support, at least on the ground when going prone, if you can. And having a bipod here with some sort of folding legs, one, it exposes your hands to the muzzle. Secondarily, if you put some sort of rail system here and then have a Picatinny and then have a bipod here, you've lost almost all of your forward grasp for your forward hand. It takes up a lot of real estate. Can be done, is challenging. Ironically, I'm thinking the answer for this is going to be going back to something we experimented with in the What Would Stoner Do project. This is not the best bipod ever, never said it was, but it is extremely light and viable in certain situations. This is the Spartan carbon fiber. And what the Spartan does is it provides a very small mounting point on the weapon, which therefore does not obscure any of this forward grip for your forward hand, whether it's left or right. And if you need the bipod, you take it out, snap it in, and now you've got a bipod. Additionally, the legs are long enough that with a standard 30 round magazine, you have the ability to fire at multiple firing angles, downward, straight at 90 degrees, but also at an upward angle, which in field conditions, firing at an upward angle with your bipod support matters. A lot of people in the audience mentioned the grip pod. Why not use a grip pod? I tried that. And with a 30 round mag, you get far less ability to fire at an upward angle. And in field conditions, if the target is presented to you, at that upward angle, the grip pod does not provide you that capability, as well as the ground could be uneven. Lastly, I kind of hate grip pods. They tend to be fragile junk. Some of them are better than others, but as you can see, it does not give you quite enough length, even when fully extended, to give you the support that you want. And they tend to be sort of suboptimal bipods. So that's coming off, but that's an ex example to you about why I did not go with the grip pod. That said, the Spartan bipod is just about the right length with a 30 round mag. So. The last thing I did is I, well, actually two more things. I added my Gemtech Halo suppressor on this. So I took off the standard flash hider that came with the gun, put it on an A2 birdcage because that's what a Gemtech mounts to, and mounted my suppressor. This is me trying to take advantage of the overall length of the gun and providing something that gives it a reason to be shorter, but still a 16 inch barrel. By putting the Halo on here, and this is a heavy can, some cans are lighter or heavier than others, guess what? The balance point of this gun is now right about right here. As, of, as opposed to being balanced to the rear, it's balanced right to the middle. This means that that recoil impulse that I'm talking about where it's kind of snappy, completely mitigated and gone, and the gun swings a little better. Now that said, we've added quite a bit of weight to this gun and this is becoming a heavy beast. 
However, it now balances better, and sometimes, in terms of firing capabilities, having extra weight is actually better. Of course, carrying in the field, that's another argument. Lastly, from the What Would Sterner Do project, I coupled this with our Halo, excuse me, Hollow Sun 503C EOTech reticle red dot. As you know, in in range, we believe red dots are the fastest, most cap capable, high speed, quote unquote, tactical and competitive red dot in realistic conditions. So, uh, sighting system, excuse me. So, I coupled that with a red dot. So, putting on the What Would Stoner Do Spartan carbon fiber bipod, balancing the gun by using the short overall length to provide a uh, halo, or excuse me, a suppressor on here, which is a Gemtech halo, thus making it a much quieter gun, putting a red dot on it for a good sighting system. I think this is going to be the optimal configuration of the MDR, and stay tuned for sort of three stages of me using this, and then conclusions at the end. We have finished all three stages that are rifle stages today at the two-gun action challenge match which with what I believe is the optimally configured MDR rifle. Um, you know as people that watch in range know I've been pretty hard on bullpups in general. We've been through a lot of them on the channel, the Tavor, the uh, FS2000 at one point. I don't know if it's on the channel but I've used the FS2000, the FAMAS infamously and this MDR being the most modern iteration of a bullpup on the market. And I always come back with this lackluster feeling of you sacrifice all the ergonomics and handling of the gun for uh, overall length. And so what was happening with the MDR, well this has been, in 556 this gun's been very reliable. 308 is, is always still a challenge, but I think 308's a challenge in general because 308 is not uniformly loaded on the market as 556 is, so that's a different issue, but I like this gun far better in 556. However, there's still a balance issue in 556 in which all bullpups are biased weight to the rear, and a lot of people say that's an advantage because you can one arm it, but the MDR is particularly balanced to the rear to the point where the, the balance point of the gun appears to be about here. And when you're firing the gun, in 308 it's really evident, in 556 it still is, where it has this snappy recoil impulse because it's pivoting behind your hand and firing like this. And so I was looking at this and I'm like, well, what's the way to fix something like that? And to move the weight forward or the balance point forward on the gun would be to add weight to the front. Now there's ways to do that. Could be with a laser. You do that with a weight, um, or you could do it with a suppressor, which I happen to have a Gemtech Halo. And in the process of adding that Halo on there, and now of course extending the overall length, but still a suppressed gun now, and a length shorter than a traditional 16 inch gun, unsuppressed, the balance point moved to here. And in doing that on top of that, as I mentioned earlier in the intro, I looked at our What Would Stoner Do bipod, the Spartan carbon fiber, which goes nicely in a pouch, and it's, you know, it is held on with a magnet. 
Um, one of the issues we had with that gun, with this on a longer gun, was that when you hit and slapped, there was enough of a pivot and arc that this would actually fall out of its mount. But since this is shorter and closer to your hand, guess what? That didn't happen either. It actually retains better. So by adding mass, on, ironically, weight to the front of the gun, the balance of this gun is markedly improved. And in fact, shooting this recoil-wise today, this feels like some of the best recoil I've really experienced on a gun in terms of inline, inline impulse. Now, there's two reasons that's going on. One, the balance point is so much better. And two, frankly, this has become heavy. Now, um, you're sacrificing some weight, uh, or actually adding weight, and sacrificing the need to carry more weight to have this gun with this overall length. But with the suppressor on it and the balance being altered to be more favorably towards the middle, this gun handles really like a different rifle. I don't really have any way to put it. It feels like a different gun. Also, on the suppressed setting, the recoil impulse is mild, to say the, 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 the least. As well as, because this is such a closed system, there's absolutely no gas blowback into the shooter's face while firing it. So, I fired this today, the entire match suppressed with absolutely zero issues. Um, no malfunctions, no gas in the face. Um, no ergonomic issues. Once you get used to this for bolt release, it's actually quite quick. And so I'm going to say that what, what I was trying to do is in this channel and always being kind of hard on bullpups, I wanted to come up with what's the right answer for this bullpup, that if you're interested in this gun, what's the way to run this, or at least the recommended way I would come to you from all the testing we've done. And my answer is you're going to want it, run it suppressed. If you add a suppressor to this, in 5.56, I haven't tried that in 308, but if you run the suppressor in 5.56, this really starts to shine because it's short overall. However, the overall length still isn't too much to be dealt with, even with the can on it. The balance has changed, the firing impulse is mild, the recoil is good, the reliability in 5.56 is excellent, and the ergonomics for a bullpup are far above average. So, in that regard, I'm going to say that this is the answer. Now, I'm going to say that there's one more thing that could be done that I would find interesting, and I don't know if MDR would want to do this, or I should say Desert Tech. One of the issues with running a bipod out front is the overall length of this forward grip. It is too short that once you put your hand on here, if you put a QD bipod on here, it takes up too much real estate, and you can't really hold it, and if you're running the bipod down, you're still getting in front of the muzzle with a 16-inch barrel. This gun, if you didn't want to run it suppressed, I gotta say, Desert Tech, I find it really compelling. If you were to run 18-inch and 20-inch barrels with longer forward grip, that would allow the people to use this with four, more mass towards the front instead of suppression if they didn't want to buy a suppressor, thus balancing the gun a little better towards the center, giving you higher velocities than you would get with 16-inch, but also giving you more real estate for your handguard to add accessories like lasers and bipods. So I think the answer with the 16-inch gun, guys, this is a great suppressor platform. If you're gonna run it unsuppressed, you want you need to want a bullpup when you run it suppressed it shines if mdr or desert tech comes out with an 18 or 20 inch barrel and longer hand guards i would find that to be a very compelling argument because now you've changed the handling of the gun even if you're not running it suppressed so that's really all i got to say for that what else can i say beyond that um i do want to say that I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this at this point, and I'm thankful for the audience for staying tuned through so much of this MDR content, because um, I don't ever want to give anything short shrift. I want to put it through its paces, and here at InRange, we try to really do the, our best to come up with the best answer we can without letting bias get involved. And so that's what you see here with this video. Hopefully you enjoy that sort of deep dive because we put a lot of work into trying and figuring things out with the Desert Tech MDR. If you do, hopefully you're a Patreon supporter. If you're not, please consider it. This channel is completely supported only by viewers like you. We're not monetized by anyone else, but I do want to say that Desert Tech did give us this gun for free, so we did not buy that with your Patreon dollars. However, everything else you see on the ammunition and the time is your Patreon dollars. If you can't do it, understand, just subscribe to one of our multiple distribution points. You can find them all at inrange.tv. Thanks, and share with your friends.